All right, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you here today. This is a uh, beautiful Wednesday, and uh, we're going to be talking about the economy and what's going on right now. And uh, this is just an amazing time as we start into a new year. And uh, we, we're bringing some excellent conversations here today um, to give you an idea of what we're going to look for in this year coming up. Now, we did have a, a speaker that was going to speak before. So, Lawrence. Yoon um, had a delay in his flight and won't be able to present today. Um, so his colleague is going to be taking over. And uh, we were talking um, a little bit beforehand, and she definitely knows what she's talking about. She's been around the world. So she's going to give you a really good idea of um, what their thoughts are from NER, what the market's going to be. Her name is Nadia Evangelou. She's a senior economist and director of real estate research at the National Association of Realtors. Her, her research searches on an effective, um, a focus is on the effect of economic, demographic, and industry conditions on the current state and outlook of the residential commercial real estate markets. Nadi oversees the uh, production of NARS proprietary housing market data, including NARS monthly um, existing and pending home sales, housing affordability, and quarterly local market reports. She also managed policy research leading research projects on topics including how federal, state, and local policies impact the real estate market. Her research and insights have been featured by major media outlets, and in 2022, Nadia was named one of the Housing Wire's 2022 Rising Stars. So uh, we are so happy to have her here. Thank you, Nadia, for being here. And uh, go ahead and take it away. Tell us what's going on. Thank you, Michael. Good morning, uh, and I'm very happy uh, unfortunately, yes, uh, Lawrence could not be here like today, but I'm very happy that I'm with you. Uh, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, before starting my presentation, I would like to thank you for having me here today. Uh, give me the opportunity to discuss with you about the latest market trends nationwide, and specifically, I will try to give you some stat statistics like for the Phoenix metro area. So we already passed like 2022, a year that affordability hit record lows uh, due to uh, rising mortgage rates. The beginning of the new year, like as we are now, usually allows like people to start all over again and send their resolutions for the year. And one of them may be to purchase a home. So the thing is that there is a lot of uncertainty and speculations around where we the housing market is heading. And after a year of uh, the multiple of the frenzy uh, that we had like 2021, the housing market slowed down in 2022 uh, in the same time we see that mortgage rates for example have started uh, to to move down so what do we need to know about like 2023 uh, how like housing markets will likely perform this year so these are some of the questions that we will try to respond today but before discussing these topics uh, let's first take a look at some very important like indicators that will help us understand better the market so i will start sharing my screen just bear with me And actually, let's start first with the labor market. So it, it's remarkable to see these strong job gains that we had, like specifically the economy was able to recover all the jobs that were lost in the beginning of the pandemic. Actually, there are more jobs now than back in March of 2020 when the pandemic hit our country. Like specifically, there are about like 3 million, like 2.7 like million more jobs now than in March of 2020. In the meantime, unemployment rate is at record lows, like 3.5 percent, which indicates how strong the labor market is since it shows how many people who want a job and are available for work can find a job. In fact, there are two jobs for every unemployed person. That's the job market recovery after the pandemic has been remarkably rapid compared to other like notable recoveries uh, in uh, recoveries in recent history. And actually, according to the December data that we have for the employment, we see that we have the most uh, uh, the most jobs than ever in the entire history uh, of uh, the data. And then when we take a look at job creation by area, we see that there are substantial variations of job growth across the country. So for instance, as you can see here, like in the map, Utah and Idaho are the two states uh, with um, the fastest employment growth across the country. Actually, uh, it's also very promising to see that there are more and more uh, states that are joining the list with job uh, gains, and actually Arizona is one of these areas with most 
uh, with more jobs than pre-pandemic. So in this stage with blue color, so um, uh, as you can see here and in Arizona state as well, not only the local economy was able to recover the jobs that were low due to the pandemic, but there are actually more jobs now than back in March of 2020. So for example, uh, we see like in uh, uh, Arizona, we have about like 4% like more jobs now. Um, but why is this important? Like or otherwise, what a strong job growth means for the real estate market. So as more people enter back into workplace, like demand for housing is expected to remain strong as they set the sites of each homeowner. Perspective. So this means when we have like a strong job growth for an area, we expect also housing demand to uh, be strong as well. But uh, let's take a look like at a more local level, like for Phoenix, what we see in Phoenix, we also see that we have more jobs there than uh, back um, when the pandemic hit, like pre-pandemic. So we have about like, 121 like, thousand more jobs. Back in March, we had about like 2.2 uh, 2 million jobs, while now we have, as of November, the latest data that we have for the area is 2.3 like million jobs. So this is great uh, to see. Um, then let's talk a little bit about inflation, which is also one of the main drivers of the economy and the housing market. So what do we see? We see that inflation has finally started to move down. Uh, it seems that the 2022s like higher federal funds rates like have tamed inflation, but of course inflation is still above like still above like seven percent. That the Federal Reserve may continue to raise interest rates. Um, uh, and actually, I think the CPI release like this week, like on Thursday, uh, with the, this release, we'll have like a better idea of what the Federal Reserve will do uh, like in the next meetings. It's important to see that they have already uh, switched to a lower interest rate increases, like instead of the 75 basis points and jumbo hikes that we had like during the summer, like four of them. So to answer the question of what to expect from inflation in the following months, I will say that if there is a sustainable decline in gasoline prices, and we see that in more production of apartments, single family homes, that there we see a slowdown, like consumer prices will pull back. Why uh, I refer to the multifamily? Because uh, we see that one of the um, components of the CPI is uh, rent growth. So uh, as we see, uh, uh, if there's like a, a less demand, less uh, supply of multifamily homes, this also can drive like home prices to increase per, uh, higher. But what we see, we see that we expect more uh, apartment buildings to be available in the market. And this can help with the rent increases. Uh, so not pushing like um, so much like uh, inflation and putting like up pressure on the inflation. Thus, uh, this deceleration could help like with the uh, inflation, the Federal Reserve to reduce the inflation like to uh, closer to its like 2% um, uh, target. However, what consumers need to have in mind is that prices will continue to increase, but it's the pace. It's that we expect like the pace to be uh, slower. So it's not that prices will stop increases, it's about the pace of the increase, which will likely uh, continue to be like slower. And this is what we expect in the months ahead. Uh, and also have in mind that uh, this is a process that it, it takes like several months for the Fed to go uh, to, to get like uh, to tame inflation to put it like back to the 2% that uh, it has as a target. So uh, as a result, uh, with um, uh, the uh, what we see is that mortgage rates with lower inflation and um, low inflation and a smaller increase from the Fed, mortgage rates have started to move down. Uh, as I mentioned, like two of the main factors that drive like uh, today's mortgage market have turned more favorable recently, and uh, uh, we mentioned like lower uh, inflation and lower rate like hikes from the Fed. That's it seems that mortgage rates may have already peaked. So after surpassing the 7% threshold in the second week of November, rates are finally moving down uh, as inflation is cooling. We see like last week, they increased a little bit, but uh, the, the trend is that they are coming down. So rates are significantly, however, rates are significantly higher than a year ago. But if inflation continues to slow down, rates may stabilize below 6%. This is what we expect, like below 6% in 2023, about like 5.7%. So that's a lot of money uh, buyers have to pay out every month between the 3% and the 6% interest rate. 
but that's still a rate like lower than the 8%, which is the historical average rate for uh, a 30 year fixed mortgage rate. So we also need to have in mind that mortgage rates are higher than the previous year, but they're still like um, uh, below the historical average. So for uh, the Phoenix metro area, like the monthly mortgage payment is currently about like $2,400. But uh, to give you like an estimate with the 3%, which was like last year, was about $1,700. So it increased from last year about $700. And with the 8%, which is a historical average, the monthly mortgage payment can be like $3,000. So now currently we are at the $24,000. Um, so with the, these rates and home prices hurting affordability and making it even more difficult for some buyers to buy um many buyers to buy a home, we see that housing market is slowing down like in 20, uh, uh, has started to slow down like 2022. And the, actually, this is a good thing. This is what we wanted to see when we were talking like in 2021, we wanted like a healthier and a more predictable real estate market. Like have in mind that 2021 was the best year for the housing market in the last 15 years since 2006 like home purchases like search over um, uh, search, uh, that year, like of 2021, like in an abnormal, abnormal way, uh, even though home prices hit record highs, like eroding affordability, housing market out the in 2021. That's nationwide, uh, will continue to slow down, uh, but maybe to stabilize uh, as rates may, um, uh, as rates we see that they are rise like at a slower pace, in fact, what we have so far, and you can see in the, in the chart is that we have the longest slump ever, like in the entire history of uh, the data of the home sales activity. However, it seems that the market will turn around this year in 2023, like with a 6% mortgage rate that we predict to have like, and lower than the 6% housing uh, in 2023, housing will become more affordable for many buyers, uh, for many buyers. And like, although, the typical family uh, cannot afford, uh, what we see now that is that currently the, the typical family cannot afford to buy a home. However, what we, uh, we're we gonna see with a 6%, a lower than 6% uh, mortgage rate, we see that Americans can uh, will be able to afford to buy again uh, the typical home, the medium price home. Uh, and uh, in like for the area, for uh, the Phoenix metro area, um, uh, a six percent compared to a seven percent um, uh, in uh, mortgage rate can make like them uh, for the medium price home in the area can make like the uh, the qualified income uh, for that to drop about like fifteen thousand like so from one hundred thirty thousand dollars to drop to one hundred fifteen like thousand dollars so this could bring in other words when there's like better affordability like more people will, will be. Uh, able to afford to buy and this could bring like more buyers back to the market boosting demand for housing and increasing like market competition that, uh, uh, that from the kind that we have um however i would like to point out that this is a slowdown when we, uh, we have talked like so far is a slowdown in the home sales activity but not a price drop uh, a, a drop in the home prices so let's see what's going on with the uh, home prices like Although these higher mortgage rates hurt affordability, we see that home prices continue to rise. Like normally, uh, we expect higher mortgage rates to cool off prices. But data shows that home prices rose 4%, like for example, in November, although mortgage rates surpassed the 7% threshold. Uh, however, um, what we see is that we experience, uh, what we experience is a price deceleration, deceleration, which we will continue this year. We don't have any price drop so far, but we have a deceleration. So this means that home prices continue to rise compared to the previous year, but at a slower pace again. So the, uh, uh, thus this year prices will keep annual appreciation flat throughout like 2023, with half of the areas across the country like experiencing, experiencing small uh, price gains and the other half seeing like some small price declines. Uh, especially in the summer months, I think we may see some small price drops uh, from um, from the record high. Because remember, like last year in the summer, 
home prices, the median home price uh, surpasses 400,000 uh, uh, threshold. So we may see a price um, drop like uh, uh, during the summer months, but home prices will, re uh, will rebound fast as inventory will continue to be uh, limited. And in the Phoenix metro area, we see the same trend. As you can see here in the chart, in the chart uh, that we have on the slide, that there is a, a deceleration of the uh, price gains, but home prices continue to be higher than the previous year, as we can see there. So uh, we also see uh, that sellers need to decrease their asking price. So we don't see any price drop but in the sales price, but what we see is that sellers need need now to decrease their asking price. And uh, what we get from the data specifically for homes that uh, uh, sold homes that uh, had to remain like for to stay on the, on the market for about like 30 to 60 days, like one to two months, we see that um, home sellers had to drop like, for example, uh, their asking price about, about like 7%. So what we see, uh, we see that fewer homes are selling also above the asking price. Like uh, a year ago, about 40% of the homes uh, were selling above the price, but now we see about like only like 24, like 25%. Uh, However, there are still like homes that are like above, like above the asking price. So, so the question is, are home prices are going to crash? Um, and I, here in this slide, I, I included some of the factors I think that we need to focus, like in order to have a comparison with the last housing uh, downturn, like uh, in 2008. And then the condition, what we see is that the conditions are totally different. Uh, first of all, uh, we don't have any uh, job cuts. Like uh, instead, what we have now, we have like more jobs than ever. Then um, what we also need to, um, focus is that about the inventory. Uh, back in 2007, uh, we had like a, a record high inventory. So we had like the most inventory ever, like about 4 million homes. However, now inventory is uh, about like 1 million homes. So we have, back then we had an oversupply of homes. However, now we have it and um, uh, an undersupply. We, we are missing homes. Uh, and when th there's like not enough homes in the market, this also means that this makes like home prices to continue to rise. And finally, we don't see like mortgage delinquency. Uh, the, uh, as you can see, like here in the chat, from the 10% we had like back then in 2008, now we have about like 4%. So then this also means that uh, borrowers are most trustworthy. Um, then inventory uh, remains low. Uh, like in real estate, a seller's market occurs when there are like more buyers uh, than available like, properties on the market. But in Sydney, like in the seller's market, the demand exceeds the supply, giving like sellers the upper hand like in the market. So historically, what we have is a six month supply is necessary for a normal like or a neutral market where there are like enough homes available for active buyers. Thus, a lower level of month supply indicates a seller's market intends to push prices like up like more rapidly. So are we still in seller's market? And what we expect like for the 2023? Yes, according to, to our latest data, housing supply is still very low. There is a three month like supply of homes at the current like sales price, even though like there are like fewer buyers in the market due to weakening uh, affordability, there are not enough like uh, homes out there. So at 1.1 million homes, but this is what we have like uh, the, the number of homes available to say, housing demand continues to outpace housing supply. Then uh, due to persistent building material bottlenecks, the, the number of housing starts will continue to be below uh, the uh, historical average of 1.5 million homes. Like single family construction will be most impacted. And this is what we see like while 2022 was the first year with a decline of single family starts since 2011. Single family construction forecast to experience additional declines uh, in 2023. Uh, meanwhile, fewer homeowners are expected to sell, and this is what we also have to have in mind, that they, they expected to sell their homes 
and purchase another like a small gas rate substantially higher than in 2021. This is also, uh, as mentioned, like uh, the locking effect. Typically, higher mortgage rates lead to lower mobility rates over time, and many homeowners may be locked into their existing homes as mortgage rates are significantly higher while the 3% like uh, rates from 2021 may not be back like anytime soon. So nevertheless, the number of homes, and this is the, uh, something else which is like very interesting to, to explore is that the number of homes under construction is at record highs and especially for apartment buildings. That's, as I mentioned before, like the completion of these homes with more homes, uh, apartment buildings uh, to be uh, back like in the market since uh, we expect the completion to be uh, sometime like soon. So these homes may help with the price and rent increase. And also this is what we also see from the private sector data that indeed we see rent prices to uh, slow down as well. We don't have like a, a deceleration only for uh, the home prices, but we also have for the rent price increases as well. So we see that demand is slowing down due to these higher rates. However, housing demand will remain strong, and this is um, due to favorable demographics. We also have uh, to have uh, this in mind as well. Like, but what are demographics we hear all the time? Uh, demographics actually are the data that describes the composition of the population, such as like age, uh, race, gender, income, migration patterns, and population growth. So these statistics mostly uh, affect how real estate market, like uh, real estate is uh, priced and what types of properties are in demand. And actually like major uh, shifts in the demographics of the nation like can have a large impact on real estate trends like for several like decades. So first of all, uh, we see that many millennials will reach the family life, uh, which means that they will turn like 30 in the next five years, like about 10 million millennials. And this is about like one in three millennials. And as a major life event, marriage often coincides with a household's decision to expand like housing and obtain like home ownership. As you can see here in the chart, um, the home ownership rate is about like 50% after the age of 33, which means that the majority of householders who are the 33 years old uh, own their own home. And then at the age of 37, the home ownership rate is about like 60% uh, and 61%. Thus, demand will remain strong as many of them will look for a home in the next uh, years. Then, in addition, uh, baby boomers, who are the people who were born between 1945 and uh, 1964, are an example of a demographic trend with uh, the potential to, to significantly influence the real estate market. But it's actually the transition of these baby boomers to retirement one of the most like interesting like generational trends in uh, in the last century and the retirement have in mind that the retirement of these people of these baby boomers have begun 2010 and is bound to be noticed like in the market for decades to come and actually there there are numerous ways this type of demographic shift can affect the real estate market for example how they will affect uh, the demand for second homes in popular vacation areas as more people start to retire, or how will this affect the demand for larger homes? It seems like uh, the income of the baby boomers when they retire um, is getting like smaller and the children have moved out from their place. So based on the data, we see that the number of uh, households age 65 and older increased by about like 40% that's points like during 2010 and 2020. In contrast, households age below, uh, households age below 65 growth by just 1% that's point. So this is a very big like difference that we have. Uh, meanwhile, in less than a decade, like the year 2030, uh, will mark a demographic turning point for the US by then, all baby boomers will be older than 65, boosting, uh, so which means that there will be uh, retirees boosting even further the number like of um, uh, older adults. Excuse me. Uh, but housing affordability is going to be, we, we, we see that demand will remain strong. We have the other conditions as well, but what we see is that housing affordability is going to be the main driver of the housing market in 2023 
and the near future as well, as we, we will continue to see, uh, especially uh, middle income uh, buyers and first time home buyers to be priced out of the market due to low affordability. Um, have in mind that housing affordability hit record lows in 2022, like owning a home uh, became 60% more expensive compared to the previous year, forcing like more many buyers out of the market. Mortgage rates may have dropped like to near 6%, but first time buyers still earn about like $30,000 like less than the income needed to purchase a starter home. As a result, less than 20% of the renters can currently afford to buy a starter home. So these are actually uh, the first time home buyers, like 20% of the renters that can currently afford to buy. Um, in addition, there are significant housing affordability inequalities among, among black income groups, especially, and we see widening inequalities uh, by income groups, especially what we see like for middle income buyers. In a balanced market, middle income buyers should be able to afford to buy half of the homes listed for sale. However, these buyers can currently afford to buy only like 20% of the available listings. And what we see in the Phoenix metro area, we see that buyers need to earn more than $150,000 in order to be able to afford to buy at least half of the listings. So, however, uh, and I included here in the chat, like Phoenix, Arizona and the United States, uh, the national level and what we see in the, in the United States, like the national level, which means in the most uh, areas across the country, buyers have more options. Like uh, they can afford to buy about like 50% with an income of $125,000. But here, as you can see in Phoenix, uh, they have to have like, a, a, if their income is about $125,000, they can afford to buy about like 40%. So in the Phoenix metro area, as home prices are higher than the national level, we see that buyers have fewer options than uh, other um, areas like across the country. Thus, I expect nationwide home ownership rates due to the low affordability, home ownership rates continue to fall in 2023 as the share of first time home buyers will likely shrink even further from the 2022's like old time lows. Um, I also uh, included here in this um, uh, slide uh, our annual forecast and what we see that we see 2023 home, uh, uh, home sales activity to drop about 7% from the 16%. So we have like a slower slowdown, like in a slower drop in 2023 compared to 2022. Uh, home prices to uh, stay relatively flat. And then in 2024, we actually expect to have like a, a rebound in the housing market. We expect home sales activity to increase about like 10% and home prices to rise at more normal level, about like 5%. Um, so this is in a nutshell uh, what um, I think it's good to know uh, for the market, uh, for the economy and the housing market. Uh, and thank you uh, everybody uh, for uh, listening to me. Thank you, bye-bye.